uh, first time to come to this this club meeting, and I wanted to thank you for sharing a few minutes of your time, uh, your precious time with me. A little bit about me, I'm, I'm very happily married, have been so for 39 years to the most in my most incredible bride. I've got one son, a daughter-in-law, and two amazing grandsons. And I think most of all, what I'd like to, to uh, start off with is to let you know that I'm, I'm actually humbled by life. I, I wrote a book, um, and I titled, I titled it Life 2.0, A Journey from Near Death to New Life. And you know, I've, I've got to be honest with you, I never thought about it, writing a book. I never believed that I would ever do such a thing. But what happened is I started to observe other people's lives being impacted by you know, learning about my journey. Uh, I had reports of people coming back and, 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 and telling me that uh, because of what they read or because of the journey, they got themselves medically checked out. Um, I had a countless people come tell me that they're now living their own version of Life 2.0. Uh, which is just a, the most amazing miracle to me that I, I can imagine. And, and I think most importantly and most humbling is I've had uh, a number of cases where lives were actually saved and extended as a result of hearing the journey that, that, that I went through. And that's what it is. This, this book is a story. It's about a story of a journey to the most amazing life I never thought possible. And here's how it began. I felt great. I had zero health issues of any kind. I had zero symptoms. I had uh, zero signs that anything was potentially wrong. Uh, but what I didn't know was that my life at the time really was the calm before the storm. And on a complete whim, I'm leaving a doctor's office, a routine annual checkup, and we're done and I'm leaving and I stop and I turn and I ask a question. And it's a question I had not been contemplating, but it is a question that later proved to save my life. It's also a, pre a question that proved to me that divine intervention is real. A little bit later, upon learning that I was at an extreme risk of a highly probable fatal cardiac event at any moment, I was told, uh, I was told I had only one option for survival, which was an emergency open heart surgery. And here I'd gone from feeling fantastic, didn't even know I had a problem to maybe my next step could be my last. So in a very, very short period of time, I was face to face with my greatest fears. I had to figure out how to come to terms with my own mortality without knowing how to do it. I, I looked in my bookshelf and there's not a book on, on how to do that. Um, and so the beginning of, of what I call Life 2.0 uh, began with a bucket list prayer that I said moments before they put me out, opened my chest up, stopped my heart and uh, for several hours and, and, and worked to repair it. Um, and, and given the, 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 the Christian foundation of this group, I, I'd, I'd like to take the liberty of telling you exactly what that prayer was. I, I don't always do it. It's in my book. But because of the foundation of this group, I'd love to share it with you. I literally closed my eyes. I didn't know what to say. And here's how it went. Dear God, I've come to terms with my own mortality. My precious wife is not ready for my passing, but please take me today if it is your will to do so. And if I am to survive, I would really want your help to achieve a bucket list of the three most essential items in my life. Number one, I'd like to dance with my wife again. Number two, I'd like to hold hands with my wife and take a walk. And number three, God, is I'd like to meet and get to know my unborn grandchild. And I said, thank you for the life you've given me so far. And I give myself entirely and completely up to you. Well, obviously I'm here today. So I, I woke up from that surgery, but you know, that, you know, as it, as it comes, comes to play the, the medical journey and circumstance that I went through having no knowledge of anything was wrong to almost dead. You know, it's pretty fascinating. It's pretty compelling, but the real story here, the real story is about this profound transformation that I went through physically, emotionally, and spiritually as it began this new life. And it really came about through a number of observations that I made of the many, of the countless little things that so, the selfless, tireless caregivers did for me when I was under their care. Mm -hmm. Along with three separate encounters with angels, I began to formulate a new uh, approach to living my life that was rooted in their example. 
you know, it was through these little things that I saw in the hospital and the medical uh, arena uh, that uh, I observed what was really going on, what they were really doing. And here's how I summarize it. These people placed their lives on hold for me. They taught me about my medications, how to eat, how to exercise. They taught me how to smile for no reason. They taught me how to be kind to a stranger. And I learned how wonderful it feels to be kind. They encouraged me, they challenged me, they even high-fived me a couple of times. And most importantly, they ministered to my wife at a time that I was not able to do so. So basically they give and they give and they give, but they ask for nothing in return. And I started thinking about that. I started contemplating that perhaps these caregivers are also teaching me about a better, more abundant life that maybe I, I could live. And so in Life 2.0, I'm focused on living life through the eyes of others versus historically a life that was always focused on me, myself, and I. You know, God opened my eyes, my ears, and my heart to the blessing of witnessing a, a, a strong impact on others just through simple affirmation of their value, their relevance, and importance. You know, it's a form of love, and it's a, a form of love I believe we all we all can give. And so as I'm, and as I'm, re-engineered re my life and, and my outlook and my approach. It's very interesting that I no longer see strangers. The word stranger is not in my vocabulary. I, I see people on the street that I have never met before, but I kind of feel that I know them. I, everybody has levels of pain. Everybody has opportunity. Everybody has challenges. So I don't see strangers in my life anymore. I also no longer see separation and, and divide, which is something that I had never experienced until, until recently. So in my life today, I'm called to do two things. Uh, my calling is all about raising awareness for cardiac disease so that uh, other lives can be saved and restored and extended and enhanced, and also to live my own life focused on others by affirming their value, their relevance, and their importance to this world. So if you're, if you're interested at some point in time uh, in, in, in this book, uh, this, is not, this, is not a, a, this is not a pitch, it's more of an offer, but if you're if you're um, interested in this book, I, I can pretty much guarantee you it will inspire you in some way, either about your own health, maybe perhaps about your approach to living, uh, or maybe about somebody else's life. I, I, I don't know. I, I hear all kinds of reports back. Um, again, some people got medically checked out. Other people you know, read it and wanted to create their own version of it, which is phenomenal. Uh, but the, the one thing I've learned about working with health organizations and the American Heart, American Heart Association is telling a story over and over and over literally has led to contribute to saving other people's lives. And so, you know, my, my wish is if you, if you ever read my book and you liked it, that's great. I'd just like you to tell somebody about it because you never know whose life is you're going you're gonna to impact. So I'll leave you with this. Life 2.0 to me is not about a mindset. It's not about a frame of mind. I think of it rather about a uh, heart set or a frame of heart. Um, I'd like to, uh, I guess I could put something in the chat session. If you're interested in this book, um, I'm going to give you a URL that you can go to in the chat session here, just a section in just a minute. Um, but the, the, the book's cost is $16.95 and uh, some places charge uh, shipping, some places uh, most everybody charges taxes. I can offer the book at 15% off, no shipping, no taxes. I will personally sign the book and I'd like to offer uh, each and every one of you, it's a small group, so I'd offer you a money back guarantee. If you get the book and it wasn't your cup of tea and you weren't inspired by it, keep it. Just shoot me a quick note back to the URL that I gave you and I'll refund your money. And, and that would be, um, when you take 15% off of the cover price, it's $14.41. So if you, um, let me go to the chat here, if I can find it. Chat. And also, um, Kevin is giving away a book at the Health and Wellness, so you will also you be entered to win. So <laughs> it is a small group, so one of you will get an opportunity to get his book as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So if you go to that website, if you want it, just fill in your name, your email address, and go into the, the contact section at the bottom of the web page and just like Life 2.0, and I'll, I'll send you a bill for $14.41. And again, that's all you pay, and I'll give you a money-back guarantee. My, my, my goal here is not to make money on this group. My goal is to, to, 
to share the share the word. So that's it, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm I'm also waiting on this book, and I I can't wait to read it. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and um, share that information. Also, uh, we will will share it in the groups as well. So thank you for that yeah. presentation. I'm oh, glad you. you're here. Oh, thank I'm, you for I'm listening. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, awesome. And uh, yeah, and and Kevin's going to be one of our speakers at the health and wellness um, conference as well. So we're excited. Another heart-wrenching story. I mean, imagine if you had a child who was sick, but imagine then if all your children were suffering from something and your whole family. But this is a woman that is a woman of steel. I mean, she has fought for her husband, her family, and kept it all together in, in, a, in, a, in an age when people you know, can't even talk to their family members. She's kept this whole family together. Uh, the captain of her ship, a woman of iron, steel, I don't know what to call her, but she's my, my hero, my inspiration. So Anne, I mean, this is such a story. Uh, you, 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 you're going to want to listen to this one. So here we go. Tell us everything. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, thank you, Kevin, for your touching story. It makes me want to share more of my heart part of my story. Um, and so what I wrote down about myself as I was listening to you, um, the thought that came to me is, uh, so as you probably, as Elizabeth told you, so in 1998, all four of our children were diagnosed with a rare life-threatening genetic disease called myotonic dystrophy. It gets worse in each generation. So my husband had it, but we didn't know it because he virtually had no symptoms. Our oldest was 20 and our youngest was seven. Um, and I have a background in social and behavioral science. And I also am an educator for the local extension office here in Salt Lake, I'm in Utah. Um, and so I decided that I needed to tell my story. And so my book, Surviving Myotonic Dystrophy, A Mother's Struggle to Care for Her Family with a Rare Disease, Disease just came out on Amazon um, the, in the last month. Um, and so after listening to Kevin, what the thought that came to me is I gave myself to my family and I found myself. And I really um, feel like that that's true. Um, I, I had so many miracles happen. I learned how to trust myself. Um, I had an experience where my, the, the one on the picture that's the tallest on the right, his name is Michael, and he's the most affected with myotonic dystrophy. He has a feeding tube um, and he's had it since 2007 and it's been um, life enhancing. He's got a college degree, but it took him 15 years to get that college degree. Um, and he's very tenacious. And all the while he's doing this, he has such a significant speech impediment that um, either his grandfather would have to come to college and give his reports for him, or, um, or he had a research paper that he needed to do and I had to go with him and interpret his questions. Um, and so there was a point where when Michael had his feeding tube and he'd been in the hospital several times for aspiration pneumonia. And I kept saying to God, is it time for me to let him go? Um, and that thought was just with me quite often. Is it time for me to let him go? And this was in um, 2007 also. Um, so at that point, I was working in town a few hours a week and Michael would meet me after school and he was in the car with me and we were heading home and it was really it was rush hour traffic and we were in the lane almost to the carpool lane not quite the inside lane and a car cut us off and so I swerved and lost control of the car and so I went across 
all the lanes of traffic in rush hour traffic and we were hit by a 10 ton truck. Um, and when we pulled over to the side of the, when, when after we were hit, um, I, it was not thanks to me, we ended up just on the side of the freeway pulled over like we'd intended to pull over. And um, so after the person that hit us, he came back and there was a police officer off duty. He came back and they all wanted to make sure that we didn't panic and get out and get on the freeway and get hit. And so they stayed there right by us. And then the ambulance came and my most important thought was Michael. Um, they, I had all kinds of stuff in my car that was important, but it wasn't as important as Michael's. It just all got left by the side of the road and I got in the ambulance with him. Um, after all of that, the only thing ha that happened was that he tore his favorite shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and so the thought that came to me here, I'd been asking God, is it time for me to let him go? And the thought was, first of all, and you don't get to choose when to let him go. That's not in your That's power. Right. Amen. And then the other thought was, um, was that it's not his time to go. And um, so I just wanted to share that story with you. Um, I quite frankly can't even remember if that story is in my book, but you can find my book on Amazon. I do talk about how I learned how to be there for myself as I gave to my family. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much. And you look so beautiful. And how do you do that? That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Look, I had a lot of folks. So thank story. you, Anne. That was a great presentation. Um, and my next speaker is actually going to give you some advice. She, I don't know how many of you have heard of Reiki. Uh, and she is a Reiki master, a Reiki teacher, an author, and a speaker. And she just moved. So we really value her time because she's a very busy person. So thank you, uh, Rainy York, um, and also an author. So tell us about the book. Tell us about Reiki. Tell us, tell us what you want to tell us. Yeah, and welcome. <laughs> I love that room, by the way. You look great. We can't hear you. We... There we are. Yeah. Um, there we go. <laughs> that's Jet, who's trying to horn in on things here. So, so this is my book, Quantum Leap. Um, it's a young adult fiction book, but it has a lot of real life and real hard science underneath it as well. Uh, I was kind of resonating with what you just said, Anne, when you were talking, because while I was in the process of writing this book, I discovered Reiki, I, I studied it, I became certified as a Reiki master twice. And it transformed my life. And I feel very strongly that it, it, it made it possible for me to write the book and that I was intended to do this. And it's just an amazing growth that I went through. And you know, Kevin's experience, we have different experiences, but um, often we, we come out on the other side with similar understandings about our own life. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, also, I feel moved to share with you today, uh, here in Washington state, we're seeing the numbers on COVID improve significantly and this state is starting to open up as a result of it. Kids are probably gonna be going back to school as early as March 1st and <coughs> restaurants are, <clears throat> they're operating at um, a fairly small capacity, but at least we can close the doors and windows now when we <laughs> go there to eat. So it's very encouraging, it's very hopeful and I love to be the bearer of good news. So- um, <laughs> Thank you. I would share with you, um, you asked me this in my interview, Elizabeth, what's my advice for getting through COVID and uh, the very, very chaotic times that we're in otherwise right now. And my advice is to laugh as much as you can, to hold a high vibration, 
a high vibrational emotion, emotions like gratitude. And we all have things here that it's amazing that we're here. We must be meant to be here or it would have transpired differently. So gratitude is very powerful. And no matter how threatened we get, try to hold on to that. And that makes us a beacon of light. And it's like a ripple in the pond. It goes out to the collective consciousness and it cannot be stressed how powerful, how incredibly powerful every single individual is when we are um, holding that light and that vibration. So. Um, Elizabeth, I thought I was doing a reading today. Do we have time for yes, that? Yes, we do. We do have time for that. Go right okay. ahead and read. Okay. Yes. Okay. And she, so she is... can really read beautifully. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I practice, let me tell you. So this is uh, again from Quantum Leap and the, the, the t uh, title chapter is A New View of Life as We Know It. So my character, Rebecca Jean, uh, she wishes for fewer rules and more control in her life. Because of that, she writes stories that um, create a world where she feels she has at least the illusion of control. And her main character is Lainey. You're going to hear reference to Lainey today. La Lainey is everything Rebecca wishes that she could be. And, um, and one day she writes a different kind of a story. It's one of revenge. It comes true just as she wrote it and it turns her world upside down. She doesn't understand any of this. So <clears throat> she begins to think that she can actually mold her reality to her view, her personal view of justice. This is pretty, pretty heady stuff for a teenager, uh, but there are consequences. And uh, the section that I'm gonna read you today, she's beginning to discover these consequences. And she's also beginning to discover that Mm, maybe she has set beliefs about people, other people and things that aren't entirely accurate. So um, she has learned of Reiki at this point, although she has not yet experienced it. She keeps hearing everything is energy. She has no clue what that means, uh, but she's asking questions she's never asked before. There just don't seem to be answers. So on this particular day, she is uh, walking home from school without her best friends and she's okay with that because um, she wants time to think. So here we go. Sam and Zoe ran for the loading area where the yellow buses were lined up next to the curb. Rebecca watched them go. They both turned to wave as they clambered onto their bus. The doors accordion shut and the bus pulled away from the curb almost immediately. Rebecca had gone only a few steps when she saw Jackson hurrying toward the bus loading area. He made a rude gesture at a retreating bus as it pulled onto the street. It was unusual for Jackson, Jackson to be by himself and Rebecca thought he looked a little lost. I would interject here that Jackson is the target of her first story of revenge and um, so it's significant because this comes to play in here later on. Don't go all soft in the brain, she muttered to herself. He's still Jackson the jerk. Jackson turned, saw her watching him and grinned his lopsided grin. He headed in her direction. Rebecca did not want to talk to Jackson. She started up the sidewalk toward home, but he caught up easily and fell into step alongside her. She glanced warily at him. Jackson didn't speak. He simply ambled along beside her. It made her nervous. She couldn't think of anything to say. The silence weighed heavily. You never ride the bus. Oh, lame. She cringed inwardly. Get your bike run over again? The bud's words just popped out of her mouth. Jackson looked at her sharply and then shrugged. Nah, Josh had a ride and wouldn't wait for me, the maggot. Hammond made me stay late. How come? He seems to be worried about my algebra grade. Oh, she said, and then, are you? Nah, well, not much. Jackson glanced at her. The grin had slipped a little bit. You're his star jock. I thought you could do no wrong. Jackson shrugged again. He doesn't seem to like to be crossed. I think I pissed him off. How, by throwing yourself under his car and making him look bad? Rebecca giggled. Cute, Becca. Jackson didn't sound mad. Mad would have been easier to deal with. 
Rebecca regretted her smart ass words, sort of. Sorry, she muttered, I couldn't resist. Pretty brutal, he said, smart, but brutal. No favors from the fat man, so it's all up to you? Mm, guess so. And? Well, I'm not a brainiac like you. Geez, I am not a brainiac, Rebecca grumbled. They were at the street, cars streaming by with a green light. They waited for the light to turn. Okay, that's not what I meant exactly. Jackson shoved his hands in his pockets. It's not like you're a nerd or something. You think I'm a nerd? Rebecca whirled to glare at him. He took one step back, looking cornered. I said, you're not a nerd, he said defensively. He pushed the blonde hair from his eyes. The grin was gone. Jackson looked serious. Rebecca was not familiar with this expression on Jackson's face. What, what I mean is it's, it's also easy for you, he said. Is that what you think? Jackson didn't flinch. His jaw was set. Yeah, he said, that's what I think. The light turned and he stepped into the crossing. Rebecca stared after him, her mouth pulled into a frown. Then she followed him. Do you know the word study? She demanded. Yeah, I do. Now he sounded annoyed. You think just because I play ball, I'm stupid or something. Did it ever occur to you that I might play ball and have a brain? Rebecca shook her head. No. Or that without a sports scholarship, maybe I won't get into college. And if I don't get into college, I'm stuck with... Jackson caught himself. He looked grim. So if I'm injured or I don't have grades, I'm pretty much screwed. He looked like he might say more, but he closed his mouth firmly. He'd already said too much. Rebecca shook her head again. She felt a sharp stab of guilt at his reference to injury. That's what I thought, muttered Jackson. I always figured you were lazy, Rebecca thought, but she clamped her mouth shut before the words could blurt out. She didn't actually know what to think, and she didn't know this Jackson Middleton. She couldn't remember ever hearing him string two meaningful sentences together. It pushed the limits of her perception of him. They walked along in silence, Jackson looking irritated, Rebecca with a puzzled frown on her face. They reached another intersection. Jackson barely glanced in either direction before trotting into the street against the light. Rebecca hesitated and carefully looked both ways. She saw no approaching cars, so she hurried after him, her heart fluttering at the risk. Did it ever occur to you this is why you got run over? Rebecca felt mean, but it was too late to get the words back. Irritation blossomed into quick anger on, in Jackson's eyes. Just as suddenly, the anger was replaced with his fig jam smirk. You're on a roll today, aren't you? The sudden change of attitude caught Rebecca off guard. She huffed wordlessly. You're cute when you're mad, Becca, he said softly. Rebecca's eyes widened in surprise and Jackson's grin broadened. He studied her for a moment. If he came to any conclusion, it wasn't apparent on his face. He set off up the street again. Rebecca watched him go. Lainey's voice in her head cautioned, let him be. Rebecca considered it, but then she followed Jackson, trotting to catch up, her book bag slapping uncomfortably against her back. The strappy heels slowed her down, not to mention they were beginning to hurt her feet. Jackson, she was a little out of breath. She thought he moved pretty fast for an injured gimp. So you're telling me you do study and you finish homework assignments, turn them in, all that stuff? Jackson didn't even glance at her. Yeah, he said, counter to popular belief. It was counter to popular belief. At least it was counter to her belief. She found this idea difficult to process. Did Jackson increase his pace? Rebecca was nearly jogging to keep up. She wished she was wearing flat, comfortable shoes. Without warning, he whirled to face her. You ever hear of no pass, no play? He demanded. Rebecca ran right into him. Her book bag slipped off one shoulder. She struggled not to fall in the strappy heels. For a moment, they were a tangle of scrabbling arms and shifting feet. Jackson was the first to get his balance and he stepped back, one hand on her shoulder to steady her. She brushed at her jeans and straightened her little sweater. He dropped his hand to his side. They stared at each other. Sure, but, but what? You think I just kip up, kiss up to all my teachers? Well, um, Jackson wasn't grinning now. I study and I do homework, he said. There was an edge to his voice. Tess freaked me out, okay? He looked suddenly exposed and then uncomfortable. 
and then his face closed. Rebecca stared up at him speechless. A charged silence stretched between them. She fought for a neutral expression. She wasn't sure she got it. Jackson was watching her. One side of his mouth twitched up. Still, his eyes didn't exactly smile. She didn't know what to call the look in them. He stared at her for what seemed a long time before turning to head up the street again. Without looking back, he broke into a long-legged jog that rapidly put distance between them. He wasn't limping at all. Rebecca stood rooted to the ground, watching him go, her mind blank. So what's happening after this and during this is that Rebecca is beginning to think that she has misjudged Jackson. She has read the book by its cover and she's realizing that the cover may not be at all what is represented underneath. And so it's very significant in her, her personal waking and her personal growth and her coming of age story, if you will. And that was so beautiful. Thank you. So quantum leap. Oh, so if anyone so has a teenage daughter or a granddaughter or a neighbor, that's a great book. But I, I personally think that book is good for any age. I mean, I have a copy of it and that's I'm going my, through it. My, my I, I really think is, it's is uh, 10 to 110. Any age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, on our reading list for the month of February. And I think it's a good read, too. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very nice. Yeah. So I'm going to now take you away from book authors for a minute, and I'm going to bring you our fitness coach. And um, she uh, wa was with the U.S. Army. And when, when Renee first came to us, uh, I think now almost eight months ago, she um, taught us the burpee and... Uh, <laughs> and you know all, for all of us who thought we were great in great shape we realized that oh my god I can't do that burpee <laughs> so I do it in parts by the way I, I do a little and a little and a little and by the end of the day I get one done um, so she moved um, and she'll tell you about her move so her presentation will probably come up I guess in a couple of clubs uh, when you're ready, Renee, we need to do that burpee again. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. And she has a great video, by the way, on Facebook. Uh, and I shared it with the group and I'll, I'll share it again of her walking and the waterfalls and everything. So I encourage everybody to, to check out that video. And if you are not on Facebook, let me know. I'll, I'll send you the link. But that was a great video, by the way. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Renee Jones Hudson. I'm retired Army, um, 21 and a half years. Yeah, 21 and a half. I also, um, I truly enjoyed um, Kevin and Ann's story. It's kind of fitting. Um, this weekend, last week, I'll say, I had... Um, we had a death in our family. Literally, it was like here to here one minute, gone the next minute. And um, no illnesses, you know, my cousin, he was, he, um, it was funny because at our church, I'm Jewish, and um, he testified, you know, about how he would want to leave this earth. And it was almost like he was like, um, preparing almost like he knew it was time for him to go so all last week because his parents are in Jamaica I've been planning his funeral and I literally just got back today so um I'm exhausted but I'm happy to be here um just needed you know a different scenery but um you know just hearing um Kevin and Ann you know talk about just life and the perspective that's really even at his funeral I was you know the the sermon that was preached you know the pastor said you know don't mess around and lose your soul and it's just so funny how fragile our, our lives are you know like I may talk to you tonight and but you know you may not see me tomorrow and it it's almost scary you know it's almost scary for me anyway and 
you know, even with um, Esther's reading that, you know, it, it's, it makes you really sit down and think about what's important, you know, what's really important. And, and I've been doing that for a while, but it's almost it's like I just keep getting reminders re of how valuable and how precious life is, not just mine, everybody's. So I just wanted to start with that, but just to go back into what um, um, Elizabeth was saying, yes, I am a personal trainer. I used to live in Virginia. I moved from Virginia to Georgia. I had a uh, brick and mortar in Virginia. So now I'm primarily online and I've actually completely restructured my, um, my business. Um, my website is um, you can get to it from my old URL, but it's um, ReneeJonesHudson.com. It's just my name. And it's, um, it's primarily, my focus is on Fit Mom CEO. So, and I'll explain the Fit Mom. So Anne is literally a Fit Mom. <laughs> um, she is, and Fit Mom really just encompasses all, all the women that they're doing everything for everyone in their lives, but not for themselves, right? Like that, that, but take, take that part out and like, you know, self-care, you're doing that. But most people, you know, we go and we go and we go, we're taking care of family, we're taking care of our careers, we're taking care of church events, we're taking care of different clubs, like Elizabeth, she has like a million things that she's doing. And then the, the, the one, the important thing that we tend to forget is ourselves. You know, we, we, we're too busy trying to care for everyone when we really need to care for ourselves so that we can be there for everyone else. Because once this ship sinks, you know, sometimes everybody else is, they don't know how to pull out the life raft, right? So I, I completely restructured it because I feel like most women, like myself, like I'm, I'm going through pre-menopause, <laughs> like believe it or not, but I'm going You're through too young. I know, I thought so too. I was Way like, too oh. young. you yeah. look so young, my I know. Mom, <laughs> my mom went through it young, I blame her. So, <laughs> so you know, and um, it's just like, we, we have so many things that we deal with that we literally just, you know, okay, you know, it's, it, you just pick up and go in the army. You just, you just suck it up and you move on. Right. But so, but we're here neglecting, neglecting, neglecting. So I could take care of my seven-year-old so I can take care of the house while my husband's at work. So I can take care of the church. So I can take care of this funeral that I have to plan for my aunt. You know, we're doing so much. And even throughout this process, I got to a point where I was just exhausted, exhausted, so that's what this whole fit mom is. It's like, take, take, put a period and let's take care of us holistically, mind, body, and in, in spirit. And um, so I kind of changed it from that because we, we, when we get stressed out, it manifests for most of us in our, in our thighs, in our stomach, you know, and for me, my body, like I have ulcerative colitis. So I start, I start you know, having flares. So it comes out in so many different ways for us. So I wanted to, um, you know, kind of focus on women around my age and um, just let them know, you know, just kind of get them, get their self-esteem back up and just kind of be the CEO of their lives, not just CEO of a business, CEO of everything that they have to do. You still do it, but now you know how to manage yourself first so that you can manage the rest of the operation in your life. Amen. See, that's so true. <laughs> and then we get all like, woo, woo, you know? So yeah, I know. And when you start noticing that, you have to take time off for yourself. So what do you do for take time off to yourself? Do you sit in the bathroom, lock the door, and no. read a book? What, what is your go-to? So what I've started doing, so I've been listening to a lot of um, podcasts, just different people, and like everyone has their ritual. And then I listened to, uh, I forgot the pod, the very last podcast that I was listening to, uh, James Patrick, and he had a guest on there that says, 
you know, you hear get up early in the morning and so that you can get most of your work done. But he was like, no, like do it at your speed. So I was trying to get up at the four o'clock in the morning and trying to get most of my work done. But he said, I get up at nine and just do it to how your body operates, what works for you. So what I've been doing, I am an early riser, 21 years in the military, it's kind of hard to break. <laughs> so <laughs> I am an early riser. So what I'll do, what I had trouble with is staying focused on what I wanted to do each time that I got up. So I would get up and do something different every morning. So what I did, I started focusing on what I would do repetitively, the same thing that I would do, and I would do that. So I got up, I would pray, then I would um, sit and meditate, which was seriously hard for me because my brain is always firing. So I, I had to set a timer, and then I'll meditate for about 10 minutes, then I'll eat, <laughs> and then I'll work out. So I started, I just follow it. Whatever my body moved me to do is what I did so that I could keep that habit going. So I didn't try to mimic, you know, what I heard someone else say. And I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I'm going to do that. I just kind of followed my own lead to where I can just, you know, develop a habit that I can um, keep doing. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So can anyone in the group, let's just do a group share for a minute. And then we have a wonderful keynote, uh, Donna Forey. Colonel, thank you for making it. I know she's putting out fires out there with the power outage, but we'll hear from her. In the meantime, let's all react. What is your go-to? Like when you really, what is the thing that you do for your time out, you know, for yourself? Kevin, you want to start first? What What's do I do? What well, what my go to is I write. Um, I, okay. I wouldn't say it's not like journaling. I just write about things. Um, I'm going to write about something I learned here tonight. Um, when when Ann was speaking, Ann, I I don't know your exact words, but I believe it. It went something like this: When I gave myself to my family, I found myself, and that parallels the story that. I tell about seeing life through the eyes of others. I, I didn't go into it, but I'll mention it here, um, that when I, I had uh, three occasions that I had uh, angels come to me, it wasn't like when I was growing up in church where I saw harps and wings and all that. None of that. It, I saw them through the eyes of other people. And that was the lesson. I thought, what is going on here? What are they trying to say? Perhaps the key to life is see it through the eyes of other people. And so when I hear Anne talk about finding herself by giving herself to her family, that parallels that message 100%. And so perhaps there, there's something there, I, I, I don't know, but I'm very, very inspired by, by this. So anyway, long story short, I write when I wanna just chill out and relax, that's what I do. So okay. thanks for asking. Harold. Tell us a little bit about how I was a controller at the Air Force. So tell us a little bit about that and tell us uh, about what's your go-to. My go-to is um, a hot dog. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I will, uh, um, every now and then, I will, uh, when I feel like getting getting away. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, just fine. Yeah, we can. Um, I go to uh, Highway 55. And, you know, the restaurants aren't crowded, especially restaurants like that. And I find myself in a corner and I sit down and I love to be among people. Uh, if I'm by myself, I find myself looking for something to, 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 to uh, occupy my mind with. But when I'm, in, when I'm in a crowd, I see things. God shows me things through people and how they're going and what they're doing, how they're doing, you know, and different things. And I've, I've met lots of, lots of uh, nice, you know, good people. But while I'm doing that, in the middle of that, I will take out my, uh, you know, your daily reading and, and, and scripture and, and, and stuff like that. And I will take that out and I will read it. And, and it's, it appears as though sometimes uh, that, that, that uh, God gives me moments where I can just sit and read, you know, my uh, either my my little pad or or my uh, on my phone, 
and read my daily reading and go through that. And and that feels that fills me, giving me things that are in my head. And at the same time, God is showing me things that relate to what I'm reading at times. And it, it just kind of broadens whatever whatever I'm I'm doing at that time. And I like to get away and do things like that. And and I would also like to say, you know, uh, those of you who have written books, Kevin, uh, Esther, all, all of you, um, thank you for your testimonies. The Bible speaks about testimonies, and that's and that's exactly what you're doing. Everybody doesn't have the same platform to stand on where they can get up and tell people about this and that. God gives us different testimonies and different things that we can do in order to share our story. And, and, and you, it appears as though you found it. At the same time, you found your gift. You found a gift, the two that you can share through your writings and, 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 and through all these other things. And with uh, 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 Renee, um, she's seeing what other people are doing. But there's only one thing about them all is they have their own way of doing things like you were saying. You were saying that you have to find your way of doing things. And it may not always be in the exact order that you, because for some reason we're, we're, we're always trying to put things in a certain order and things when God may have you a, a, a four or five things that you are to do before, before lunch. And it may not do, it may not be in that certain order. So stop pressuring yourself. You, you, you're pressuring yourself into finding this solution. Just let it, you know, let it flow. It's, <laughs> I hate to use this analogy, but it's like pregnancy. When uh, my, uh, uh, I had some friends who were trying to get pregnant, but they were trying hard to have children. Nothing ever happened. Then one day they just stopped trying and they just relaxed. Now they got about five kids, you know. <laughs> but the things that you, whatever you find that's going to be it's going to work in your world. It's going to work with, with, with your lifestyle. And as you, when you move from, uh, from one location to the other, uh, God just gave you a new arena to, to develop yourself. Sometimes it's not a, it's not something that will, uh, hurt you or take you away from your, from, from whatever things you like doing. Sometimes it broadens those things. And sometimes it's, you know, it's called stretching you. And, and, and it appears as though you found something, too, that, you know, like with the wives, uh, 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 you know, something that you can focus on and things like that. So just continue to relax and, 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 and not be, uh, not put yourself under so much pressure to do things. Something's going to just, the, the things are just going to pop and you're going to find that it's probably more than one thing that you can, you know, that you can really focus on. But uh, um I enjoy listening to you all and your stories and your books because you all are giving me a lot of information and stuff that I can use myself. Now, the other thing is the one, the final thing I want to talk about is uh, being a chaplain at the uh, hospital here. You get you you meet people who are um, uh, uh, giving up. You meet those who are are encouraging. I went to a room once and spoke to a young lady and I didn't know who she, uh, who she was or, or anything, but I walked by the room and I saw her, you know, she was lying there in the bed. And I just kind of tapped on the door and said, uh, uh, anybody awake in there, you know? And she turned around and looked at me and I said, hi, my name is Harold, I'm one of the chaplains here. And I just wanted to drop in and just say hi. And she, she, she turned around, completely turned around in the bed and sat up. And I noticed she had no legs. She didn't oh. have no legs. And so that stunned me. So I'm expecting, you know, a very sad person. And she popped right up and said, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad you came in here. I'm going to tell you about some things God's been doing for me. And it just completely threw me off, off kilter. And she, my day had not been going all that great. But when she, when I got, when I finished talk with her, I had a great day, you know. But the thing about it, again, going back to Renee, take your time. And it's all, it's, it's going to come to you. It's 
the whole world now is just topsy turvy. There is nothing <laughs> that's normal anymore as we talk about the new norms and, and new things. And I think that each and every one of us are finding finding ourselves or finding new selves within ourselves. And that's great. And it, the greatest thing too about that is we're able to share that with each other because what you have, you're sharing, like, like uh, Kevin was saying, he's already writing down stuff, things that he can use. Esther, I know she's already, I know her head is just, just spinning. She, 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 she sees another book. Kevin sees another book. And, 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 and you're seeing other avenues still within the same framework of what you're working with, with, with health, with physical health. And you're, you're able to help other mothers. See, it, it, and more things are going to come to you. But uh, thank you all for allowing me to sit in uh, uh, and uh, listen to you all because uh, I'm getting stuff. I'm 72, 71 years old and I'll be 72 in uh, March. And I'm still developing. It doesn't matter how old I get or how old I am. I'm still developing. I'm still thinking, thinking new ways to do things and new ways to say stuff to people. So uh, again, I'd just like to thank you all for allowing me to sit in with you. Very well, nice. thank you. Harold never speaks. So this is the first time I'm <laughs> hearing him. So I let him go. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, and he's also kind of come a caregiver in some sense as well with, with his wife, uh, who's a fantastic baker uh, and makes the best Watergate salad you could ever imagine. Uh, uh, so yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, so yeah, uh, Esther, do you like to be called Esther or Renee or both? So uh, tell us what your go-to is. Yeah, you've got to turn your sound on. Tell us what your go-to is. Wait, what is that secret place for my, you? My go-to is Reiki. Um, first thing I do is breathe. And um, I, I like to start my day by meditating before I even get up. I, I love the luxury of being retired so that I can, uh, Teddy thinks it's time for supper. If you can hear him in the background, I'm sorry. Um, I do what I call my, my chooses. And, and that includes, I choose inner peace and calm. I choose joy and gratitude. I choose love and compassion. Um, and as you all know, sometimes it's easier than others to do that. And sometimes there are pressures kind of urging you is, okay, you need to get up and get going. But, but when I don't get to do that, I feel it. And I will share with you, we have three kitty cats and one of them is a real barometer for me. When I'm stressed out, he acts out and he takes it out on the other two. And our little shy kitty, will, she will not let me pick her up and hold her if I'm too stressed out because you know they're reading our energy. So, so they help me to know where I am and to acknowledge it hopefully quickly, but um, Reiki for me is, it's a sacred place. It's not uh, an affiliation with any religion on the globe, but that doesn't mean it isn't sacred. And my goal, and, and, and Harold is right, there's a book everywhere. Um, my goal is to celebrate the places where we are alike. Look at this group, look how diverse we are, but there's a common thread under this. and. I think that the way, this is giving me chills, <laughs> the way we save ourselves in our society is by celebrating the, the ways that we are alike. Yeah, and we all have the same color blood and there's a lot of things we have in common. So right. we you. I could give you my kidney and save your life. So yes, it's true. Um, you know, I encourage you to get her book, Quantum Leak, but there's a chapter, Reiki 911. Oh, uh, you I like that, don't you? <laughs> she did a book reading. So if you need that link to the YouTube, I will give it to you. And you can hear her read the chapter if you can't get the whole book. But that, that go-to was really, really, really powerful. And Anne has in her book, uh, and we'll come to Anne in a minute as well, and then I'll share with you something in her book that made me... Um, have a go-to. So Priscilla is going to present a little later, but
But Priscilla, what is your go-to? Where do you go with all that beautiful jewelry? What's your go-to? You said it, my beautiful jewelry. (laughs) 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 Used to be my mom, but she's not here with us anymore. So lately, I've been a little bit on my creative side. I've been like starting back to crochet, starting back to Mm. baking, a little bit of everything. But, you know, I'm, I'm learning to control my stress a little more. When I feel that level coming, that's one of my go-to. Either I'm going to pick up the crochet needle and I'm going to start crocheting or I'm going to bake a cake or go bake, make some soup. I'm going to do something creative like that. That's my go-to. That's, 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 now that I don't have my mom anymore, that my creativity is becoming my go-to. Besides my jewelry, okay. my jewelry is my business, but I also <laughs> play with that all the time. So, yeah, that's one for that, me. That, yeah, that's great. Yeah, Mrs. Wooten and Nancy, what is your go-to? Oh, I like your background. Okay, yeah. Thank what is your go-to? You. Thank you. You said, "What is your go-to?" It was a committee meeting. A, 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 uh, so, AKA. Okay, okay. Oh, what I read in the morning? I read the daily bread. Oh, okay. I read that too. That's a good one. Yeah. Read and pray and ask God if He would guide my feet today, just today. That is so beautiful. Yes, today was some great, some great words were said. Yes, thank you, Nancy. What's your go-to? The lady sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. She shares yeah. a lot of her love and her spiritual growth, and we enjoy talking and communing with each other about the Lord. Yes, yes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes. So, Anne, tell us about your go-to. Yeah, taking care of four children and a husband. Tell us about your go-to. Well, that's part. So I'm going to put a plug in here from my website. If you'll go to my website, which is my name, and middle initial S, as in Sam, woodbury.com, um, and you can sign up for my downloadable PDF. And really what it is is um, how to create your own self-care formula. Um, And there's some real basics that we all are once different times in our lives, we're missing different things. Um, And so that I guess my kids would tell you this about me, I don't sit still very well. And, um, and yet with my family, that's something I have to do in order to spend time with them. So my go-to is to always have some kind of um, needlework to do. I just barely finished my COVID quilt that I started like two weeks before COVID started and it was all hand done. Um, so I just have to have something to do with my hands. And, and I love what, um, I can't remember who, 
it was, but uh, the cre it's about creating. It's about even if you're cooking in the kitchen. Oh yeah, it was Priscilla. Um, <laughs> Be, being creative, putting my makeup on is my artwork for the day. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah, and I'd like to see that quilt. So bring it to the club or the, the next okay. meeting. We'd love to see that, yeah. So Donna, Donna's just been through, through a storm. Donna, how's everyone? Power outage, vaccines, not knowing where to go. How, tell us all about it. Well, so it's great to be with you guys. Uh, sorry I'm a little late um, and I wasn't able to do my normal um, presentation to help you guys with your business plans. But um, yeah, my, I live in a rural part of Virginia, Southern Virginia. My county has 90% of our citizens without power, no power wow. right now. So um, because I'm on the, yeah, it, it's been unbelievable today. So uh, I myself had to get a neighbor to come over with a chainsaw just to get out of my driveway. It was blocked wow. with oh my so many trees and debris that I couldn't get out of my own driveway. So um, you hear that, it's, it's devastating. Uh, we had to we had to find people with um, you know resources to help people who were at home with no heat and they had health problems. Anyway, we went through a whole litany of situations today to help people, you know, one on one and and th find out what was wrong and, and get them someplace safe. And then tonight, I, the reason I was late was we were handing out free water and free food at one of the fire stations. Um, as people showed up, we loaded up their cars and it's just been a crazy day. Uh, I still, I'm still not sure we've gotten to everybody, but we've been trying to make a dent. Tomorrow we'll, we'll do more, but would ask you guys to pray for everyone affected by these storms. You know, it's, it, it's, it's been bad in Texas where, you know, I'm from, I'm from Austin, Texas. My family's been through it all. And now it's over here on the East Coast and in between a lot of mayhem. So and you just, just need to pray for everybody out there right now that's going through this bad weather. And, you know, hopefully it's this is the last of winter, hopefully, you know, but, but thanks for your patience. Yeah. It's good to be here tonight. No, and thank you for joining. My goodness. So, yes, we've got uh, Prophetess uh, Ebony. Are you on? Can you talk? Yes, we've got a I prayer can. warrior. Yes, you got a whole town to pray for. Uh, they, uh, is it a hurricane or is it a storm? Donna, is it a hurricane or is it a storm? It, is there it, a name? It was it? a series of ice storms. There, okay. It, it was called a polar vortex. And uh, it just, uh, we just had nothing but ice storm after ice storm after ice storm. Today was the first day it was above freezing in quite a while. So we thought out a little bit, but that the, 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 the roads look like um, like a war zone. You know, I've been in a war zone. They look like a war zone. There's trees everywhere, power lines are down. It's just yeah. like unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it in my whole life. So. It sounds like it, Crazy. sounds like it. There. Yeah, Crazy. I've been talking to her on and off. Yeah, so e Ebony, are you on? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, so we, we'll do a prayer for you, Donna, one-on-one -on -one after this call. Why don't you introduce us to yourself and tell us about your husband and tell us everything and your life in Goldsboro. Yeah. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Prophetess Rivers. I am 37 years old. Um, I currently go to Liberty University for criminal justice, and I just got my BA in biblical theology. I was called to preach the gospel about six, seven years ago, and I have not turned back. I am grateful for it. It's an honor to walk and to edify the kingdom of God. Me and my husband have been married for 10 years. So when I look at him, I'd be like, favor, favor, favor. I thank God for him. He is currently um, in the academy to be a police here in Texas. So to God be the glory on that. Um, he is also in school as well um i own my own business called velma's beauty it was inspired by my grandmother um before she went home to glory to be with god me and my husband took her in our home because i was always taught that if my mom always taught us that if she can raise three then there should be no reason why three can't raise or take care of one when one gets up in age so when it came to my grandma 
it was no second questioning on where she was going to be at. I didn't feel that we had to put her in a nursing home because me and my husband said, as long as we have a house, she has a house and they only expected her to live for three months in hospice, but she ended up living for 11 months with me and my husband. And when I, you know, they talk about people having dementia and everything, but my grandma knew the word of God, though everything was, you know, disappearing or she wasn't able to know this or that her main thing was baby don't forget to pay my tithes for church and every day before I would go to school or when I would come home from school you know I would read and you know just read scriptures to her and pray and that's one thing that I noticed that she never forgot was the voice of God and who God was so she inspired me to do Velma's beauty because my grandma embodies everything that beauty represents. So it's shampoos, it's conditioners, it's hair, it's edge control. You know, I make wigs for people that have alopecia, you know, skin products. It's just, you know, she embodied everything that beauty is. And I think that beauty is more than just, you know, skin deep, you know what I mean? So if there's a way where yeah. I can put a smile on someone's face, or if there's a little girl that has cancer and you give her a wig, you know what I mean? It brightens her day. And it just makes me feel good. Um, I heard you guys were talking about a go-to that, what what is our go-to? My go-to is in the morning. I Now, I barely start going to the other room because my husband would be like, babe, you got to go to the other room. Like, you be up. And my thing is, before the sun hits, like three o'clock in the morning, I'll turn on worship music and just pray and pray and pray and just give it all to God. Because my thing is, you're up before I'm up, God. So if I can just put a smile on your, my thing is, what can I do to put a smile on your face, God? What can I do to edify the kingdom of God? Or what is it that I can do to tear down any altars that the enemy tried to pull up or strengthen my brothers and sisters around the world? And, you know, that's my go-to is to go and pray and worship. My husband tells me, you need to go to the other room because three o'clock in the morning, babe, Mm -mm. ain't nobody ain't nobody got no time for that so recently I've been going to one of the guest bedrooms and worshiping but just falling before the Lord and just praying and hearing his voice because a lot of people have lived their whole life and they've asked me well how do you know it's God's voice I've never heard God's voice so to be in daily commune with him and to know the father's voice and then for him to give you a respond of what it is that he has for you to do or what it is he wants you to pray for or what sermon he wants you to write. And it's timeless sermons because it's all to build up the kingdom of God. So no matter if I write a sermon, you know, last year and then whatever church I go to, he said, okay, pull out this sermon from that day. It's for this church. And to be able to see the change on people's faces and they'd be like, baby, that was for me or how you know that God was, you know, just obedience to God. And then, you know, I am a recording gospel artist. So, you know, just to write music. I love writing music. Like music was my passion. And that was one of my main things. I was like, God, once I start walking with you, are you going to take music from me? And he had to, you know, he explained, no, that's a gift. You're just not going to be using it to tear my people down this time. Now you're going to do it to build my people up. And, you know, it's rap. You know, I, I love rap, but now it's to build up and to help the youth instead of having something that will tear them down. And yeah, that's my testimony. And I thank God for it to God be the glory. That is a wonderful Amen. testimony. Um, so I have one more presenter. Donna, how are you feeling? Do you want to present give us something or shall we go with i'm going to go to priscilla right now um oh uh, yeah I'm going to go to her. let me just say one quick thing uh before priscilla starts yeah. I, I do apologize that we weren't able to do a, a business planning um webinar tonight like i normally do for everybody on the call um we will do something later in march to make up for it but i do encourage you since we're having kind of a weird start to 2021 and we've shut the door on 2020 whatever your business plan uh actually was even at, the, at you know, on one january assuming you all did a 2021 business plan keep in mind that this year is going to be an up and down kind of a year whether it's with the covid um the financial future of america coming out of this and even for you and your family okay and I will tell you that we're we're probably headed for some financial strains 
uh, not just because of COVID, because we've had a, a big upheaval in the country politically. We've had the, the virus, you know, we've, we've still got a lot of people that need to be vaccinated. So there's just a lot of churn, you know, uh, going on in America that may influence the financial markets. So if that's something that concerns you, that's what I'm here to do. You know, I am a licensed agent with New York Life Insurance. And a lot of people think we only do life insurance, but we actually are a full financial services company to assist, you know, people with questions and concerns and mapping out a, a plan, an investment plan to help you and your family. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is, you know, we've had a lot of presentations over the last year. It's been almost a year, guys. Can you believe it? On this yep. journey with yep. Claire, where she pivoted her entire group to <laughs> Zoom. It's been almost a year. And I will tell you yeah. that um, the friendships and the camaraderie that have been born within this group, whether we've had, you know, 30 people on the call or, you know, 10 people like we have tonight has been an amazing kind of um, gift that I feel like I've received from God to be with all these people, you know, every couple of weeks to talk, share things, learn things. So be patient with me. I'm sure I today got off kilter, but I had to do my county level responsibilities to my citizens that, um, you know, that I owe, you know, help to. So I felt I had to spend my day with them. So I appreciate your patience and Absolutely. we'll make up for everything in March. So God bless you all. Please stay safe. And I pray for all of you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Donna, I am really there with you. Uh, that is heartbreaking. I just read about the woman who died. She froze. Was help too late? That is so sad. Yeah. Mm. In this day and age. Unfortunately, yes, yeah. she was in a bad situation. Nobody knew it. And her caregiver, finally, when the weather cleared, her caregiver went to check on her. She was elderly, and she had literally frozen to death. So, yes, it's terrible. Mm. But, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah terrible oh my god well we can definitely bring you back uh so whenever you're ready for another presentation uh we will do that um so yeah and and, and please feel free to reach out to everybody in the group uh yeah thank you for coming it's a big responsibility to be a commissioner and in a time when the town is in crisis yeah so um you know, we can drive to you and bring some boxes of food. Let me talk to Elton and see how to coordinate that. Yeah, uh, maybe next week or something or sooner. So I'll call you about that. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, Priscilla, they say save the best for last. She <laughs> has an eye for jewelry. And uh, I have, I know this brand very well. It's just $5 a piece. You can't go wrong. But right, the way right. she selects it and curates it, I can't find these pieces myself. So she's a curator. Yeah. So I can only imagine what those cakes taste like, Priscilla. I need to get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love to bake. That's one of the things yeah. I like to do. Yep. Okay, so tonight, first let me introduce myself. Everybody know, hopefully, that I'm Priscilla Wilson. I'm an independent consulting with paparazzi accessories and I've been doing this now for almost be three years in May and how I came about this I retired from the state of New Jersey and I was like wow I am literally gonna go from three paychecks a month to one paycheck a month. <laughs> and I was more concerned about how that was gonna work so I needed that extra income so I watched my cousin do this on um, live, she's in Atlanta, Georgia. And I sit and he's just watched her every day. And I was like, oh, wow, I could do that. So she didn't have to call me. I called her and told her, Look, <laughs> I'm, I'm joining your team. And she was like, you joining the team? I was like, yep, I'm getting ready to go on your website. And I'm going to literally sign up for your team. And I did that. And I basically just signed up. I had that extra money. I wanted to make like an extra $500 a month. God be the glory. This was it. So um, is that right? Dennis went from, she was like, well, maybe you need to start your own team. And I was like, I don't want to start a team. I just want to make my $500 a month <laughs> and let it be. But then people start asking me, could they join my team? So I was like, okay, I'm not going to turn anybody down. 
So I started my team. And my team is called Miss P's Gems. And I really enjoy what I do. And that's come on on at um now I'm gonna start doing three nights a week. Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'm gonna start coming on about 8 30 to showcase whatever I have to show. But that's what I'm gonna do from now until I get tired of those days and I'll switch up a little bit. But anyway, stop talking so much and get to business, okay? <laughs> So tonight, I'm going to show y'all some pieces. And that's one thing I like about paparazzi. They put out these beautiful pieces. And they put out pieces that, could, you know, match this up. You could change the earrings to this. You could come up with a bracelet with this or a ring. And I'm going to show you. Now, this bracelet right here is just $5. You have your um, little bead, beaded earrings on a silver fish hook. All the jewelry is nickel and lead free. You have an extender to make it shorter or longer. And when you put this piece on, it's gorgeous. Doesn't look like it's only five bucks. You have this nice big black stone in the middle encased in um, silver with the little detail going around to give you that texture look, okay? Now, if you didn't like those little earrings, you could always buy a bigger pair of earrings to match it up. And to me, I don't know about you ladies, but that look great. I love yep, that. They do. They do. And it goes yeah. with it. And I don't have a problem with, this might be circular, but here is a square. But it still matches. Okay. And then if you wanted to add something to it, here's a bracelet. This is a cuff bracelet. It's only $5. But look at the stone. And look how perfectly it could go with that, even though we're, we're dealing with different shapes. This is more like a teardrop shape. This is a circle and this is a square. But still, it matches perfectly to me. It looks nice. You don't have to really stay within that same, you know, that same um, thing. And then here's the ring. All our rings are stretchy bag rings. That means they could fit a size six to a 10. And like the wider bands, they seem to be bigger, but you could take these links out. You could pop them out to make it smaller to fit. But look at that ring. That ring is gorgeous. And that's more like a rectangle or a triangle, but it's not you know, perfect, it's just there. It's, but it's a nice stone encased in silver. And if you put all of these together, let me see, can I put it all together? We're gonna take our earrings up here. And we're gonna put our bracelet right here. I still might not do it right. And then you got your, your ring. And this whole set, a perfect set would be only $20 plus tax. But if you went into the department store, and they had that many pieces together, you might be more like paying $59 for the set or more. So that right there is a nice set to me. Okay, next I have this turquoise. And turquoise wasn't one of my favorite. This right here is like the Santa Fe look. You have your um, turquoise beads. Then you have a little silver bead right there on the side. You have the little um, turquoise beaded earrings on a silver fish hook. And again, look at that pendant. That is so cute. You can wear it close to the neck. And then you have this nice stone that has the crackles in it. And then you have it encased in silver. And with that, I added this bracelet. This right here is stretchy bracelet. You get three. Three, um, three strings of uh, beads. One set has a turquoise and silver bead. Then you have an all silver bead. And then you have another silver bead, but they have like designs in it. You can see that to give you that textured look. There are different types of beads. So this right here would only be a $10 set for this. The paparazzi put out new jewelry every day. Every day they put out new jewelry. And then my last one, because I don't want to take up too much time. This set right here, it comes for, it comes from um, 
you have these little discs. As you can see it has indentations on a silver fish hook. You have your extender, which all our necklaces come with a extender. Look how pretty that is. And it's moving. Oh, yeah, that is. And you have all the indentations in there. That is gorgeous to me. And this is what I like. You can always match and match. Now, this right here is a match, and it's just adding a tad bit of color. But the pattern in this earring is so much similar to the pattern in that necklace. And you can change it up from those tiny earrings to the bigger earrings. It gives you a whole different look. Plus, you're adding a splash of color. Okay? And that would only be a $10 set. Now, paparazzi also has what they call blockbusters. Blockbusters are pieces that never um, that never sell out. They never sell out. And if they do sell out, they'll bring them back. Versus the piece, new pieces that they drop every day that just like this necklace. And the last necklace that I showed, now that necklace came out like two weeks ago and it sold out. So therefore, you can't find, go onto my website and get that necklace anymore. You could only get it through a dealer that has it, a consultant that has it. It wouldn't be on my website. And then he also has something called a Z collection. That's the um, top line of paparazzi. It's like a $25 piece that they sell and that's their collection. And most of the pieces in that collection are actually named after consultants. You get challenged to do certain things. And if you win that challenge, you get a piece of jewelry named after you. So when that season is over, all the pieces that's left out of that collection goes into a vault and you don't see them anymore. So just like this year they came out, which we had 20 Z piece collections and already they don't sold out of except maybe eight. We only have like eight left. And if those eight don't sell out by June the 30th, then they put them in a vault and you'll never see those pieces anymore. So with that being said, I appreciate y'all letting me come on. I'm always looking for new people. If they, you know, looking for extra money just to, or to build your home-based business. And I want to talk to retirees. This is one of the best things that you could do to retire and to have some extra money coming in and you don't never really have to leave your house if you don't want to. You can actually sell and never leave your house. Make sure, Priscilla, that you give us your your shopping link in the chat yeah. uh, oh, so okay. people know where to go. But uh, we're going to finish early today, so that's awesome. And uh, Donna will reach out to everyone. And, and I know uh, we're praying for you, Donna, for everything that's going on with your city and your county. And it's probably going to take a while for everybody to get uh, back together. I know I've been through four hurricanes myself. So I know it's not an easy place to be. Um, I'll, I'll talk to Elton and see if we can get some food boxes over to your county um, and figure out how to do that. Um, so we'll, we'll get that to you. Um, so thank you all for attending. For those of you who want to stay, uh, we're gonna be praying. Uh, and those of you who want to leave, uh, we understand. Um, but thank you for your time today. I thought today was amazing. I think everybody needs to get a big hand. Come on. <laughs> I think all the presentations were great. And, uh, and I know that because of the weather, I know Steve and a whole lot of people were coming and they were stuck in New Jersey. So we, we've lost a lot of people tonight, but we will get them back uh, in March for the conference. So my next event with everybody is the 25th, 26th, and 27th. This is the conference that you really must attend. Um, we have tons of good stuff coming up and prizes and everything. Uh, so get with me. Um, I will, Kevin, I'll get in touch with you. Anne yep. and Rainy, I've finished all your flyers and all your marketing. I want to start doing the social media thing uh, this week. So I will be sending you all materials to go through and approve, uh, and then we're gonna run with it. Um, so I think it's gonna be a great conference. So please everybody mark your calendars. Uh, 
Saturday will be the day for the vendors and the book signing, and we're going to have like a home shopping network format um, as well. So remember, it's not just this group, but we have online. Uh, I think yesterday we had 5.3 million, and I, I still have to figure out what, how can we monetize these people. They're watching our videos uh, on Facebook, but I have to still figure out how do I get them to connect to buy books. Um, so I've got to put my head together and analyze these people that are coming to us and how do we convert them. So uh, there's no point having them and, you know, they're just watching, but we need to know who they are. So that's going to be on my thing. But I'm going to be very busy this week promoting. Um, so and if anybody wants to volunteer, please get in touch with me as well. So Harold, Priscilla, you know, if you all can give us some time. Uh, my big concern with the conference is the Zoom because, you know, sometimes Zoom can go unstable. So I want to have at least 20 of us, you know, watching the videos and, you know, making sure that we're not Zooming out. So uh, <laughs> so, so I'm going to need help. So everybody, please get in touch with me. Um, all right. So on that note, we next meet on the 25th. And uh, Donna definitely will give you extra time and we'll figure out how to get you to present. So, so we'll do that. So those who want to stay for prayer, please do that. Donna, definitely you stay because we need to pray for your county. Um, but those of you who need to leave, I understand. So prophetess, I'm so excited about this. I mean, we've got a devoted person who's going to be at every club meeting to pray with us. I think that's really, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And I've been praying for this person for some time now. So, so God has sent her to us. Um, so go ahead and pray. And close us out. Yes, Donna, do you have any special prayer requests? No, I think we've, we've kind of highlighted a lot of problems going on right now. But um, I think we just need to pray for our country at large you know whether it's a weather issue that's going on or the stresses of, of what's going on still with covid and uh, there's still a lot of people that are not vaccinated there's still a lot of people dying from this disease so you know as a whole country we've really got to come together and something i've learned from the last few days which i already knew but it really sunk in with this storm is you know people have to check on each other they have to call their neighbors they have to call their friends they have to check on people because we had some elderly people here in our county that didn't have any family left in the county and no one was calling them and checking on them. So we were going door to door just to say, hey, are you in there? Are you OK? And, you know, just just to check on people to call them up or go over their house and say, do you need water? Do you need food? Do you need prayer? You know, what do you need? You know, and just so simple things. Just they need to be done. Just yeah. I agree. I agree. I know. Um, okay, so Ebony Rivers, prophetess, um, bring us into prayer. You know what we're praying for. Yes, ma'am. With all hearts and minds clear, Heavenly Father, we come boldly to your throne. We come boldly to your throne because your word says when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst, God. So as we are coming together in agreement, God, we are binding up any foolishness that the enemy will try to bring into this um, into this room, God, and we are sending it back to the pits of hell, God. We are asking you, God, right now for healing, not just upon America, but all those that are around the world, God, because there are people that are out here that are seeking to know who you are, God. So we are asking that you have your way with them, those that are dealing with this weather, God, we ask that you be with our brothers and our sisters, those that are homeless, the elderly, those children that have lost their homes or have not came back to their homes, God, we ask that you give their parents peace, but then that spirit of depression, we bind it up right now as well, God, and we send it back wherever it came from, God, any counsel that the enemy has done, God, we counsel out any agreement that the enemy has done, we reject it, God, and because we operate from the third heavens, God, we know that we can come to you asking you for these things, and you will hearken to our words, God, we ask Ask you God that you be with those people that lost their family members God that was dealing with the um, man that just went out for no reason God killing those people that were on the train God and stuff God we ask that you be with them God we ask that you comfort them God but then we ask you right now those that are dealing with the vaccine that 
feel like there's no cure, God, we know that you are the cure. We know that you are the um, that you are the one that will be able to heal everybody's body, God. The word of God says, if my people, we are your people. So if we are your people and we are called by your name, we'll humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, then you will heal the line, God. We are asking that you don't just heal America because this isn't just an American thing, God. This is a global thing. We ask that you bless and watch over our brothers and sisters that are in Jerusalem, those that are in India, those that are in Peru, those that are all around the world, God, and let them hearken to you, God. I am praying for their souls, God. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody that is up under the sound of my voice, for their family members, those family members in their lives that want to know you, God, but they don't want to really come to you yet because they're playing on the fence, God, because they know if they come to you, that means that they would have to turn from their wicked ways, God. I am praying for them, God, and then I am asking that we be the light bearers, the image bearers in our family. So when people don't know what to do, God, you give us the words to be able to speak to them. We don't judge them, God, but we come and we meet them where they are to be able to snatch them out of the fire, God. I thank you for every business that is on the line, whether they are writing a book, whether they are doing jur journalism, whether they are going to spread the the gospel whether they are helping people and exercising or in health awareness mental awareness whatever it is god we ask that you enlarge their territories god show us exactly what it is that you have for us to do god and if it's not of you god then take that taste or that desire out of us god i thank you for who you are i thank you for the blood of jesus but most of all i thank you for the holy spirit that operates inside of us god we ask that you have your way. Give us rest tonight. Send a legion of angels to camp around every single one of our households, God. And we ask that you continue to do all that it is that you are doing in our lives, God. We confess our sins to you. We ask you to forgive us for anything, God, that is in us that is not of you, God. Let us turn from those things and run after you, God. Let us clock in over time to be able to fulfill what it is that you have for us to do, God. And as those were that were in the Bible, God, as they turned the cities upside down, let us do the same thing. Let us never take your glory, God, and put every single crown that you give us back at your throne, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Wow, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Ebony, you have been sent to me from God. I know this. Uh, and I had to wait for a whole year to have you join this group. Because uh, I've been praying for someone to pray with us, and it's been a year that my prayer has been answered. So God takes his time to answer prayers, but he, here you are. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. To God be the Lord. Well, Donna, you have every one of us with you, so you're not alone. And uh, feel free to give us a call, and I will call you and figure out how to get resources that we can provide from here to there. So we will be calling you. Yeah. All right. So thank you all. We've spent a lot of time today and we will see you on uh, at the conference. Thank you so much. This was okay. fabulous. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Enjoy everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bless Good night, you. everybody. Good night.